Right grade nines, as I said, I will also explain the effect of returns by the debtor on the accounting equation on the whiteboard. It just makes it a little bit more easier if we can see the actual T accounts and how they are affected. Then it makes our interpretation on the accounting equation a little bit easier. What I've done now is I've actually recorded the original sales transaction to Kaylee Borne. If you go back to your uh, debtor's journal PowerPoint presentation and the effect of credit sales on the accounting equation, you'll see the transaction there. That was sold on account to Kaylee Borne for 1,200 Rand and the cost price was 800 Rand. For that transaction, we issued an invoice. So what I've done, I've entered this already as the original transaction. Then it's going to be easier for us to see what happens if we need to turn that around or reverse it. So let's just recap here. Okay, so with sales, we sold to him for 1,200 Rand. Remember, sales is an owner's equity account. What's the rule for owner's equity? Debit minus credit plus. So if we sell to somebody cash or credit, it means it's an income. Sales is an income. Therefore, it increases the owner's equity. So we recorded that 1,200 on the credit side of sales. Good. To whom did we sell? We sold to Kaylee Boni, um, who is a debtor. Debtor's control is most just the summary of all the debtor's debt in our books. That is an asset to our business, the, the amount that they, or the money that they owe us. What's the rule for assets? Debit plus, credit minus. So when a debtor's debt increases, we write on the debit side. So that was our a part of the sales transaction. Happy with that. Then we said, but with every sales transaction, there's also a B part with the smaller amount because we need to indicate that our trading stock has left the store and that this 1,200, the sales amount, is not our profit. There was an expense attached to this transaction. So if we look at the A part, oh, the B part, we said, okay, so we sold trading stock. So our trading stock decreased. Trading stock is an asset. Once again, the rule is debit plus, credit minus. So if I give the client my stock, some of my stock, it means my trading stock levels decreases. So I have to write on the credit side. Then we said with every sales transaction, we need to indicate what did our business originally pay for this trading stock that we are now selling um, as, um, as a transaction and to earn an income. This is not our profit because we had to pay for it long time ago. And therefore we have the cost of sales account, the cost price of the stock that I sold. So cost of sales is also owner's equity account and expense. What do all expenses do to owner's equity? They decrease the owner's equity and therefore I go and write on the debit side. So now that was the original sales transaction. Now we come to the uh, place where Leboni has returned some of the trading stock. I think the transaction said the trading stock was damaged. So he returned stock to the value of 600 Rand and the cost price of that trading stock was 400 Rand. We investigated and said, okay, it's fine. We're going to um, accept it back and we issued a credit note. All right, so let's start with that part. What is our source document? That's nice and easy. Remember, we said it is a duplicate credit note. Why? Because the original one we gave to the customer, to the debtor. Now, because we're working with sales and cost of sales and the client is returning stock, we still, with the returns, will have an A part and a B part. So now let's go and reverse this whole thing. Obviously, he didn't bring everything back. He only brought a part of the stock that was damaged, that part he brought back. So when we need to um, reverse or undo the A part, what do we do? In the original part, we credited sales. So in order for us to undo it or reverse it, we'll have to write on the, or we have to debit sales. But are we allowed to write on the debit side of sales? 
No, never, ever, ever. So, well, not during the year, only when you close your accounts off at the end of the year, but that is for grade 10 onwards. So we're not allowed to write on the debit side of sales. So what do we do in its place? Like the debit side of sales, we create a new account, which is called debtor allowances. So, instead of then writing on the debit side of sales like we want to, we don't. We go to debtor allowances and we debit debtor allowances. Why? Debtor allowances is an owner's equity account and expense to the business. It's the debit side of sales. Now, an expense, so debit minus credit plus. So what was the sales amount that he's returning? That was 600 rand. So I'm going to debit debtor's allowances with the 600 rand. Right? What's now happening? He's returning that stock to us. So obviously he owes us less because he's not taking all of that stock anymore. So his sales or the sales that we've made to him has decreased and subsequently his debt has decreased. So let's have a look at debtor's control. He owes us 1,200 Rand, but now he's returning 600 Rand of that original sales transaction. So what do we need to do? We need to go and write on the other side. Now, cancel some of it. So we're going to credit debtor's control with 600 Rand to show that he now owes us less. All right, so let's record the A part then of this returns transaction. Good. Debtor's allowances is what? It's an owner's equity account. So I go to my owner's equity part of the equation. Okay, by the way, asset equals owner's equity plus liabilities before we start. Right, so debtor's allowances is an expense. It decreases the owner's equity. So under owner's equity, I will write minus 600 rand and my reason is debtor allowances please write it out on your side you can just write that or you can write equals and expense good so we've dealt with debtor allowances good next one what is debtor's control debtor's control is an asset what happened there the debtor owes me less we Credit the debtor's control. So go to assets, under assets, what happened? Minus 600 Rand, and my reason is debtor's control decreased. Happy, that's the A part. Did anything happen to liabilities? No, you can leave it open or make a zero or draw a dash. Right, let's move on then to the B part. So what happened then? Um, the Leboni return stock. What was the cost price of that stock for the returns? 400 Rand. So now um, we gave him stock with a cost price of 800 Rand. He's returning 400 Rand with, um, with our stock, the cost price. So what do we need to do? We need to put that stock back on the shelves. Now, so if if the stock decreases on the credit side, what do I what do I need to do to show that the stock is now increasing again? Obviously on the plus side, on the debit side. So my trading stock asset is increasing with 400 Rand. There's now more for us to sell. Yes, I know it is damaged, but we've discussed that and we said, remember, even the damaged stock, we're going to technically or theoretically put back on the shelves. Why? From there we can say, okay, we can't um, claim it back from the wholesaler or the supplier. We have to write it off or donate it or whatever the case might be. But there is then a process of record keeping and we can see what is happening with the stock. If you just receive it back and chuck it in the storeroom, I can promise you your books will never ever balance. So it's important to even um, um, record the receiving back of damaged stock into your trading stock. Happy with that? Good. Let's move on to cost of sales. So what happened there? Once again, it's a, a tricky little one, but if you keep your wits together, you manage with that one. So originally, the cost price or the yeah the cost price of the sales transaction, what it cost me to actually be able to sell those uh, trading stock was eight hundred rand. That was the expense. Now. The client is returning some of the trading stock and therefore our sales is decreasing. 
So as an effect or as a matter of fact, my cost of sales expense must also decrease. The sales is not that big anymore. So therefore, I need to go and write on the opposite side. I credit the cost, I debited originally cost, cost of sales with 800 rand to show that it decreases my owner's equity. But now I'm going to credit cost of sales with that cost price of 400 rand. And that means my profit, the owner's profit in the business is actually now increasing a little bit because the expense is decreasing. So when an expense decreases, the owner's equity increases. Right, so we've done the analyzing on our accounts. Let's go write it in our accounting equation. So for the B board, what type of account is trading stock? It's an asset. What happened to my trading stock asset? Because the client sent some stock back, it means my trading stock increased. So under assets, plus 400 and my reason is trading stock increased good and then what happened to cost of sales be awake now cost of sales is what type of an account owner's equity or an expense which affects the owner's equity so i go to owner's equity what happened to my owner's equity it increased with 400 rand and what is my reason you can either just write cost of sales or cost of sales decreased. My cost of sales expense decreased and therefore my owner's equity increased. Good. So if we look at the accounting equation, is it still in balance? Because that's important. We need to check it after each um, transaction that we've analyzed to make sure that we're on the right track. So what happened here? Minus 600 plus 400 gives me a net effect of minus 200. What happened under owner's equity? Minus 600 plus 400 gives me a net effect of minus 200. Nothing happened to liabilities. So once again, my assets is indeed equal to my owner's equity and liabilities. Great nights, I really hope that this could help um, to sort your problems with an um, um, accounting equation, especially, especially analyzing this returns by the debtors. I know it's quite a tricky um, transaction, but if you follow the steps, if you make use of your T accounts and you just take it systematically, I'm sure that you'll be able to manage to fill this in.